hello and welcome to the channel so I just want to give you a bit of a view of my in-ground potato patch here and I have been using the root stout method for the past three or four years where I just pile up the straw and hay in the fall and in the spring I just pull back some of the straw and hay place my potatoes directly on the ground don't bury them in and then just cover them up with more straw or hay this has been working really well and another really good benefit of using this method is I've been building up a really nice soil beneath all this straw and I'm going to take you up close and show you how over the past few years all of those leaves and straw and organic material has broken down and it's really created a nice soil underneath all of the straw so today I'm also going to run you through my drip irrigation setup that I've got going here. As you can see, I have some emitter hose strung throughout the garden. I've kind of got it placed out so that I will be doing about eight rows of potatoes and there will be a emitter hose dripping nearby each of those potatoes, which I think is going to really um, improve the harvest, hopefully come fall of my potatoes. For the most part, using the Ruth Stout method is a way of kind of retaining that moisture so you don't have to water as often we've had a really dry couple years last year you know i did need to add some water to this area even though um, you know i had it covered in straw it just got so dry so i figured you know putting in an irrigation system once it's in place is a hands-off watering method that i hope to spread throughout my whole garden here and I will take you step by step as I expand throughout the garden into my containers and other areas of where I'll be planting this year. So I have three kinds of potatoes chitting up this year. I got some Yukon Gold, some Red Norland, and some Russets. So I purchased these three kinds of potatoes locally about three weeks ago. They are Saskatchewan grown seed potatoes and I see that they have lots of good sprouting happening on each of them so it's time to get them in the ground and get them growing. So I'm hoping you can kind of see here I have turned on the drip irrigation and this emitter hose has emitters every 18 inches so when I plant the potatoes, I'm just going to plant them about 18 inches apart near each of these emitters. And then they can get the, the full benefit of that water. I believe the suggested spacing for potatoes is more around 12 inches. But because, like I said, I have these emitters every 18, I think I'll just use that as my spacing guide. And I am going to try and just bury these down a little bit. You can see we got the sprouts here. So try to make it so at least some of them are pointing upwards. So as you can see here, now we've got them planted up. I think I got nine in my rows here. You can see how the dripping is already getting to those potatoes. So I'm going to start off by burying the t potatoes only. I won't be burying the, the drip emitter, but I will be covering it up probably if, with a little bit of the hay and straw once everything's ready to be covered up. So now that I've got the potatoes covered up, I'm just going to kind of lift this hose just so it sits on top. I don't want it to get plugged up and hopefully the, and eventually the moisture will soak through. I'm also gonna secure it with some of these uh, stakes that I purchased on Amazon just to kind of keep it in place.
Okay, so two rows of potatoes planted and four more to go. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a visual of how I have my irrigation system set up. And this uh, whole configuration here is pretty much a basic setting that you would have to use for any type of drip irrigation, such as what I just set up with my potatoes, or if you're going to be using emitters or different types of um, sprayers in your containers. This is kind of your starting point um, of what you need to get going. So I'll just take you in on a close up here of the setup. So first of all, you have your water source coming from your well or um, your house, wherever you have a, a tap. And this is the battery operated timer, which is just an optional part of this system, but I highly recommend it. You can obviously use it for when you're away. It'll, you can set the timer so it waters automatically while you're away from home, or you can also manually set it for a certain time. So you don't forget to shut it off. So I think that's very handy. And then after the timer here, we have this filtering system here. So this is good to have, especially if you're using well water or rainwater to uh, filter that water, make sure there's no small particles of dirt or minerals or anything coming from your water that might clog up your irrigation system. And then after your filter piece here, you have the pressure regulator, which is also very important to have for an irrigation system. So what this does is just slows down the, the water pressure coming from your, through your system here, because coming out of the tap, it is uh, way too high a pressure and it would just blow out a lot of your irrigation lines. So this reduces the water pressure down to 15 to 20 PSI, I believe. And then after that, you have this converter piece that just converts from a garden hose attachment to the three quarter inch uh, piping here. So this is going to be the start, the main starting point of your irrigation system here. So when I first was setting up and planning out my irrigation system, my hope was that I'd be able to use uh, rainwater that I collect in on my this IBC tote. We have a runoff here from this garden shed that collects rainwater, plus we have several rain barrels at the house that get filled up really fast in a rainstorm, and so we just pump it into this tank. So I tried hooking up my system, first of all, to this part here, and I found that the um, it's just not elevated high enough, and the pressure was just too low. I couldn't seem to get a good flow throughout all my lines. Just even in the potato garden here, it wasn't really taking the water all the way to the end of that system. So that was um, a fail. So from there, I tried using this submersible pump. This is how I've been watering my garden. Most of the time it's hooked to a garden hose. It runs on electricity. I submerse it into this tank and then I can just, you know, hand water with my watering wand. So I thought maybe this could work if I plug it into a timer and uh, kind of run it the same way. But the other problem with rainwater is it is very dirty. There was a lot of, you know, buildup of algae and uh, leaves and dirt and bugs all in the rainwater. So that clogged up my filtering system within like 20 minutes. So, so plan B didn't work. So plan C was to have to uh, use well water. So we have a well set up really close to the garden here. And as you can see, we got a, a Y connection on it because we use this come summertime when the cattle move out to our land here we use it to run it to their water trough and it's got a super amount of pressure so it does work with an irrigation system really well so I have my hose connected up to it and then connected here to the irrigation timer system so the one downfall of using well water is that we don't really have the best water it's got a lot of alkali in it I think I'm going to maybe get it tested because I'm just not sure how it's going to affect my plants and the soil over the long term. But until I get a better filtering system figured out for my rainwater, we're going to go with the well water for now and see how it works on the garden. 
So as you can see here, I got that three quarter inch line heading over to my potato patch and then I put in a T fixture. So one of the parts that you wanna make sure you get when you're purchasing all your items for your irrigation is these on off valves. You definitely wanna set one up on each of your zones so that you can pick and choose where you wanna water and not waste water in areas where they don't need to be watered. So by putting in this T fixture, that gives me the option to move on and set up another area with some irrigation. So that's where this three quarter inch line is leading us now. And I'm just getting things ready to set up in my containers. So I'm really hoping this irrigation system is going to be a huge time saver for me. I found that last year I was spending every evening out watering for you know over an hour and it was just taking away from all the other things that you want to get done in your garden like weeding and fertilizing and just kind of working on your plants so you can stay tuned and keep watching i will keep updating you on how my irrigation system is going it's kind of like lego you know you get all the parts and you can just keep going and building and creating all sorts of different watering systems so I'm hoping this is going to be a really good time saver for me this summer. So I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, setting up my irrigation system and getting the potatoes planted under straw here in the garden. I will keep you updated on the growth progress of all of my vegetables. Please leave a comment, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.